let's talk about the idea of a reference angle. So what is a reference angle? So the reference angle of any angle theta, which, which is put in the standard position, standard position here meaning, of course, that the initial side coincides with the positive x-axis and the terminal side terminates, well, wherever it wants. Uh, the reference angle of angle theta, which we're in this lecture series, we're going to denote the reference angle as theta hat. You draw a little hat symbol on top of the theta here. This is not a universally accepted notation. Some people will do things like theta prime, um, or you could talk about like ref of theta, or a bunch of other things. Some people don't even give a notation. But just so you're aware, in our lecture series, if you ever see a theta hat, that that will be the reference angle. So the reference angle of angle theta is going to be the positive acute angle formed between the terminal side of theta and the x-axis. So what I mean by that is if we have the terminal side right here and you have, excuse me, the initial side right there and then the terminal side over here. So this is our angle theta. Well, then the positive x-axis uh, which would be this line right here, what is the angle, the positive acute angle formed between the terminal side and the x-axis? You might get something over like this, theta hat. And so the reference angle in general is not the same angle as the angle theta itself, although there are some exceptions, of course, to that. So for example, if you take a 30 degree angle, notice that a 30 degree angle, if you're in standard position, will terminate in the first quadrant right here, in which case you're then looking for the positive acute angle formed between the terminal side with the x-axis. That's gonna be the same angle. So in the first quadrant, uh, the in the first quadrant, the reference angle is just the original angle. There's no difference whatsoever. So in, just make a little comment about this, in Q1, the reference angle is just the angle theta. They, they're one and the same thing. No, nothing different there. Uh, but if you move on to like, like the second quadrant, take a 135 degree angle for, for example, this terminates here in the second quadrant. You see that right there. In the second quadrant, the angle between the terminal side in the positive axis is going to be formed right here. And so if your angle start off with 135 degrees, then the reference angle is going to be 45 degrees. How many more degrees do we need to complete the 180 degrees to complete the line? That's going to be 45 degrees. So in particular, if you're in the second quadrant, you get that the reference angle theta is going to equal 180 degrees minus theta. That is, in the second quadrant, the reference angle is just the supplement of the given angle. Okay, um, let's move on here to example C. Example C is an example of an angle that will terminate in the third quadrant. So if you take theta to be 240 degrees, that terminates here in the third quadrant. Well, how do you compute the reference angle? The reference angle will be the angle between the x-axis uh, with the terminal side, so that's a positive acute angle. So we can see something like this. So for 240 degrees, the reference angle will be 60 degrees. How did we find out that angle right here? Well, if you're in the third quadrant, you have to figure out what portion is past, what angle measure is past 180 degrees. So in the third quadrant, your reference angle is how far past 180 degrees are you? So your theta hat here is gonna equal uh, theta minus 180 degrees, like so. And we could do some other examples of this, like what happens if you have an angle that terminated in the fourth quadrant, something like this. Well, if you're in the fourth quadrant, the reference angle is gonna be how much more do you need to get to 360 degrees? So let's make a comment about that as well. So in quadrant four, your reference angle is gonna be how short of 360 degrees are you? So you take 360 degrees minus theta, that would give you the reference angle right there. And so as long as your angle is between zero degrees and 360 degrees, you can use these strategies, these four formulas I put on the screen here to compute any reference angle. But what if you're larger than 360 degrees? What if you're less than zero? Like what if you have a negative angle, for example? Uh, consider example D here. If if you take D to, or excuse me, take theta to be negative 210 degrees, then the reference angle is going to be 30 degrees. Notice that negative 210 degrees, you wrap backwards. Negative degree measures mean a clockwise rotation. This would actually terminate in the second quadrant right here. But of course, the reference angle is going to be 30 degrees. You go, you go uh, negative, well, excuse me, you went negative 30 degrees past 
the 180 degree mark. So how do you get that? Well, again, one strategy is always just to switch it over to something that's in, um, you know, between zero and, and 360 degrees. So if we added 360 degrees to this, we end up with, of course, uh, 150 degrees, in which case that terminates in the second quadrant, in which case you get uh, 30 degrees from there. So geometrically it makes sense, but from a computational point of view, it's almost just easier to always just put something between zero and 360 degrees. Uh, two other examples is take theta to be negative 140 degrees. That terminates, of course, in the third quadrant. The difference between negative 140 and uh, to all, get all the way up to this right here, be another 40 degrees. You can see that again, geometrically, very simply. If you want to do it from a numerical point of view, uh, one strategy will just be add to it 360 degrees, right? So put it between the range zero and 360. If you did that, of course, that's going to give you 220 degrees like so, for which how far past 180 degrees is 220. 220 degrees minus 180 degrees is going to be 40 degrees, which is the reference angle. Um, one last example, F here. What if you take something larger than 360 degrees? Theta equals 540. That means we went around once, and then we went another half spin. So 540 degrees is a spin and a half. And so it's going to terminate on the left x-axis right there. What's the angle between it? Well, if you're at all confused, maybe subtract 360 from it to help you out there. That's going to give you 180 degrees. And then remember, or if you're since this will stop at 180 degrees, are you in the second quadrant or the third quadrant? Kind of both. It doesn't really matter. You either take 180 minus 180 or 180 minus 180. Oh, it's the same thing. You're going to get that the reference angle here is zero degrees because there's no gap between 450 and that. So the reference angles, again, uh, if you're between 0 and 360 degrees, you can use these formula right here to help you compute the reference angle. And if you're outside the 0 and 360 range, you're something co-terminal to that, just then compute a corresponding angle to that is between 0 and 360 degrees. And this will help you compute these reference angles, which are very critical in trigonometry, which is something we'll talk about, of course, in the next video about the reference angle theorem.